Parasites invade human bodies and devour others. When one takes over Shinichi's hand, it gives him the power to save humanity. Mysterious creatures emerge from the sea and enter people's homes. One sneaks into a couple's bedroom and slithers into the man's ear. Elsewhere, another tries to crawl into Shinichi Izumi's nose, but he wakes up and throws it against the wall. Horrified, Shinichi rolls up a book to squish the strange creature, but it jumps and penetrates his hand. The teen sees it slither under his skin, so he strangles his arm with earphones to prevent it from moving into his body. Hearing the noise, his mother Nobuko arrives, so he tells her that a snake got inside his arm. When she looks, his arm is fine, so she blames his music for giving him nightmares. After she leaves, Shinichi checks his arm again, confused. In the morning, Shinichi's right hand feels strange, but his mother thinks it's because he strangled it last night. Meanwhile, the other infected man approaches his wife. His face then morphs into a monster that eats her head. On the way to school, Shinichi's girlfriend, Satomi Murano, startles him. He complains about this, saying they're not kids anymore, but she points out that he's blushing. Suddenly, Shinichi's right hand touches her face, then her chest. Shocked, Satomi hits him and walks away, leaving Shinichi confused about what happened. During class, Shinichi's eraser falls. When he reaches for it, his right hand suddenly extends to grab it. Surprised, he checks if anyone saw it. While playing basketball in gym class, Shinichi struggles to catch up. However, when a classmate passes the ball to him, he throws a perfect shot over his shoulder without looking. Given all the odd occurrences, he looks up involuntary hand movement later online. Suddenly, he sees an eye on his knuckle, which quickly vanishes. Suspicious, he uses a cutter to cut the skin, but his hand turns into a fanged monster, making him stumble on the bed. Then, it morphs into a hand-shaped creature with an eye and mouth, but it struggles to communicate. Still, the creature manages to say that it failed to eat. The frightened teen asks what happened to his hand, so the creature says it ate it. It then asks him to teach it how to speak. Meanwhile, the other infected man copies a news anchor's face while learning to speak. When he hears children arrive, his original face returns, and he goes to them, stepping over the mother's decapitated body. The next morning, Shinichi thinks he's dreaming as the monster reads a book and surfs the internet to learn about this planet. The boy also notices that the creature learned Japanese in just one day. Troubled, the teen threatens to have his hand severed at the hospital, but the creature refuses as it feeds on Shinichi's cells and would die if removed. Shinichi thinks of doing it anyway, so the creature reminds him that he'll lose his hand permanently. Appalled by the thing, Shinichi wonders where it came from, but the monster's only memory is failing to eat his brain, thus being unable to complete its mission. They then visit the library for the creature to learn about the world. When Shinichi calls it a monster, it suggests the name Migi, meaning right hand. The teen actually chuckles at the thought. Afterward, they watch Kendo and archery training for Migi to learn combat moves. When Migi asks what Shinichi does, the young man attends art class. Satomi arrives and warns her boyfriend not to touch her again. Unable to explain, he just apologizes. She then praises his painting, yet Shinichi feels insecure and hides his canvas. Another classmate teases him for painting Satomi, so he denies it and decides to start over. As the young man struggles with the creature, other infected people discreetly attack others. In the morning, the young man reads about the murders in the newspaper while riding the bus. Suddenly, Migi presses the stop button, startling Shinichi because other passengers might see. Off the bus, Migi leads its host to find the creatures that managed to eat their host's brain. Shinichi refuses, but Migi drags him forward, insisting on knowing what it could have been. They soon stop at a closed restaurant and enter through the back door. Inside, they witness a monster consuming a corpse and then changing into a man's face. He recognizes Migi but realizes that Shinichi's brain is intact. The teen runs, but the doors are locked, trapping him. Migi tries to defend its host, but the monster reforms and cuts off his hand, offering Migi to share the host and kill Shinichi. The young man trembles as Migi considers this. However, when the monster attacks Shinichi, Migi slashes off his head. Although Shinichi is grateful to Migi for saving him, the monster defends that the other's proposal was risky. It saved itself and still considers leaving Shinichi's body. Later, Shinichi and his mother stop at a store to buy mincemeat because it's his favorite, but he doesn't have an appetite. As they walk, Nobuko expresses her worries about Shinichi's recent behaviors. However, when Shinichi notices her scars, he yanks her hand away, saying that he's just stressed with schoolwork. While watching the news, the young man shares that he wants to tell the truth to stop the other creatures from murdering people. Migi is against this since Shinichi might become a suspect too. The creature adds that, like humans who eat animals and plants, its kind does the same. Shinichi defends that human life is precious and that monsters don't need to feed on them. However, Migi believes sustaining one's life is more important. The creature promises to protect Shinichi but warns that it can silence him to defend itself. This frightens Shinichi, so he calls Migi a demon. Curious, Migi looks up the word and concludes that humans are comparable to it. At the restaurant, detectives Chuji and Hirama discover human body parts 
bites inside the victim's stomach, suspecting he was a man-eater. The following morning, during the school assembly, Migi alerts Shinichi that another monster is there. The other seems to be searching for them but won't attack in public. Then, Ryoko Tamiya is introduced as the new teacher, and Migi identifies her as the monster. She looks intently at the student as she detects Migi's presence in him. Despite his fears, Shinichi later follows Tamiya. She assures him that she means no harm and claims she wants a normal life. She then senses Satomi watching, so the teacher suggests they meet later. When Shinichi objects, Tamiya corrects his manners, and the young man mocks her for acting like a real teacher. However, Migi insists they meet with her as she might help it survive without Shinichi. In a public aquarium, they meet Tamiya and two monsters, Shimada Hideo and a police officer nicknamed Mr. A. Tamiya invites Shinichi and Migi to join and gather data for the network, a group where their species share information and survive together undetected. Given that their actions have reached the news, they've tried to be more discreet and have only been targeting people whose deaths won't matter. Still, Shinichi refuses to join, so Tamiya reveals her experiment with Mr. A, resulting in her pregnancy. Despite being parasites, their human bodies conceived a human child, thus making her wonder about their purpose on Earth. Shinichi again refuses, but she clarifies that she's asking Migi. She warns the teen not to interfere since she can eliminate his entire class in seconds. To demonstrate, she strikes a display in half with her monstrous face and whispers to Shinichi that the school and his girlfriend are her hostages. As the monsters leave, Migi warns Shinichi that the policeman wants to kill them. In their residence, Shimada and Mr. A feed on a dead body, while Tamiya eats human food, which Shimada believes is harmful to her. Mr. A remains skeptical of Shinichi and Migi, but Tamiya Tamiya thinks that the two would provide great research material. At home, Nobuko invites her son to dine out, but Shinichi objects, saying it's unsafe outside. Nobuko suspects Shinichi is hiding something, but he claims that it's normal for him to have secrets as a teenager. Still, his mother tries to be supportive, but when he notices her scarred hand, he storms off. Later, while Shinichi is painting, Migi asks about Nobuko's scars. The young man remembers how he knocked over a pan of hot oil when he was a child, so his mother shielded him. The burning herself. Although Migi doesn't understand selflessness, the creature now realizes that Shinichi painted his mother. After school, the young man silently observes his mother working, feeling guilty. He then heads home, but Migi senses Mr. A nearby, whose bloodlust is now stronger. They attempt to flee, but he catches up to them. He reveals that because Migi killed the monster at the restaurant, the police got a sample of their species, which could jeopardize their existence. Knowing they're in danger, Migi prepares to fight, whispering to Shinichi to follow their plan. As Mr. A and Migi strike each other, the young man musters the courage to get close. Without looking, he stabs the officer with an iron pipe. Upon seeing a dying man, Shinichi flees. At home, he throws up, traumatized about killing a man. Migi assures him that because a parasite controls Mr. A's brain, he's no longer human. Shinichi doesn't think it's that simple, so Migi acknowledges that humans are difficult to understand. Despite their efforts, however, Mr. A is still alive and plans to transfer to a new host. Coincidentally, Nobuko passes by and sees him, so she approaches. At home, Migi alerts its host that a monster is approaching, so the young man rushes to the kitchen and grabs a knife. When the front door opens, it's Nobuko, and Migi realizes it's Mr. A occupying her body. Refusing to believe this, Shinichi threatens Migi with a knife until Nobuko calls the creature pathetic for being at its host's mercy. In denial, he apologizes to his mother for keeping secrets, crying that he didn't want to burden her. However, Nobuko transforms into a monster and stabs Shinichi's heart before or leaving him to die. Hoping to save him, Migi enters Shinichi's body. In the morning, the young man wakes up drenched in blood. Migi explains that it used a portion of itself to renew Shinichi's heart. However, the young man realizes that his real mother is dead, so he grieves. Days later, Satomi visits Shinichi as he hasn't been to school but sees him leaving. She tries to catch up to him, but he flees. Shinichi confronts Tamiya about Mr. A, but she claims not to know where he is. She points out that the parasites have personalities, and Mr. A is powerful and dangerous. She actually introduced him to them as an experiment. Hearing this, Shinichi blames her for his mother's death. He pulls a knife on her. However, she notices that Migi has swapped cells with him, piquing her curiosity. With that, she leaves. In the art room, while looking at his painting of Nobuko, he promises to kill Mr. A. In their office, Chuji informs Hirama that the fingerprint on the iron pipe matches those found in the restaurant's back door, leading them to believe it's the same suspect. However, Chuji points out that the stomach of the murdered cop contained human flesh, confirming the rumors about the parasites. Hirama cautions him against jumping to conclusions because 
because the management will halt the investigation. At the train station, Shinichi wanders, but Migi's concerned that they'll accidentally run into Mr. A unprepared. Just then, Migi detects monsters in the crowd outside, so Shinichi blends in with them. However, the creatures realize that the monsters are those on stage. The young man looks up and sees mayoral candidate Takeshi Hirokawa, who's also a parasite. Back home, Migi is cheerful because its fellow is in politics, citing the possibility of parasites ruling the world. Shinichi disagrees because they're underestimating humans. Suddenly, the detectives visit their home. They check how the young man manages alone, and Shinichi shares that he cooks by himself and his mother left him savings. When questioned about Mr. A's case, Shinichi claims not to know anything. Despite this, Hirama looks into his eyes while Miki hides with his talents out. Thinking he's innocent, the detectives leave. The following morning at school, Satomi greets Shinichi, sympathizing about his missing mother. She then introduces Shimada as a transfer student who pretends he doesn't know him. As they shake hands, the two tighten their grips, making Satomi wonder what's wrong. After the others leave, Shinichi sees Tamiya observing them, leading them to realize that Shimada is there to watch them. In her office, the teacher notes that Shinichi's physical strength has significantly improved. Shimada credits it to Migi's presence, and the teacher suspects it's their cellular combination. Later, Shinichi prepares the search for Mr. A, but the creature warns that his cells, body, and personality is becoming similar to Migi's. Worried over its host's intentions, Migi reminds him that his mother can't be brought back to life. Moreover, Migi reveals he can spontaneously sleep, and it won't be able to help when it does. With that, Migi sleeps, and Shinichi's hand reverts to normal. In the detective's office, they research online and discover that a parasite's hair will curl when pulled out. Because of this, Tamiya and her comrades become cautious. They wonder if Shinichi leaked the information online, but she declines to stop her experiment since it's for their future. Hirokawa hears this and vows to reorganize the government when elected. He then checks on Tamiya's child, and she assures him that it's developing normally. At school, Satomi waits for Shinichi and offers to cook for him since he's not eating healthily. As they buy groceries, she expresses her worry that Shinichi has changed. However, she sees that he is the same person as he relaxes around her. Outside, they see an injured puppy in the middle of the road, and Shinichi goes to rescue it. However, it dies, so he throws the animal's body in the trash. Satomi is outraged, but Shinichi claims it's no longer a dog. Disappointed, she leaves. When Shinichi asks what he did wrong, Migi thinks that what he said was what it would have said, thus proving that he's being like the parasite. At school, the administrators notice Tamiya's pregnancy. When she gets home, the original host's parents visit after the school notified them about her pregnancy and resignation. However, the mother sees that it's no longer their daughter, so Tamiya kills them. The next day, Shinichi enters her office while she's packing, though she asserts that Shimada will remain in school to watch them. They're experimenting on how to survive without feeding on humans, which would let them coexist. Still, Shinichi points out that they hijacked human bodies, so he distrusts them. In the art room, Satomi finds Shimada as the model. However, when a classmate flirtatiously pulls his hair, it curls. In Enraged, Shimada reveals his monster form to the horrified students. Unable to leave, Satomi hurls paint remover at the monster. This burns him, but he goes on a rampage. Hearing the commotion, Shinichi rushes to the art studio and discovers his classmates' bodies. He starts to panic, but Migi calms him down, reminding him that Shimada has lost control. Meanwhile, Shimada hunts Satomi and detects her hiding in a locker, so he smashes it. She tries to run, but he strikes her leg. Suddenly, Shinichi pushes Shimada aside, rushing to Satomi's aid. Shimada strikes Migi off Shinichi's arm, but it's able to morph back. Tamiya then arrives, expressing her disappointment over Shimada's actions. The others beg for help, but she tosses a makeshift bomb. Seeing this, Shinichi grabs Satomi and leaps out the window before it explodes. Despite this, the police find Shimada alive, and Migi alerts Shinichi that he's heading to the roof. Confident in his abilities, Shinichi heads to another rooftop while carrying a metal spike. Then, Migi morphs into a bow, and the boy shoots Shimada in the heart. Tamiya Tamiya arrives, and Shinichi blames her for the deaths, noting that he should have killed her already. However, she points out that her human baby will die if she does. She muses about how motherhood gives a human power, which is something she wants to experience. As a peace offering, she surrenders Mr. A's location. The next morning, the young man locates Mr. A and follows him under a bridge. However, Migi becomes sleepy, so it transforms into a weapon before falling asleep. Though confused about how Shinichi is still alive, Mr. A attacks him. Shinichi quickly deflects his attacks and overpowers the monster. When the young man is about to strike, the monster pretends 
to be Nobuko. Seeing him hesitate, Mr. A lashes again. The real Nobuko suddenly takes over and pushes the monster's attack, making him miss. Seeing his mother, Shinichi strikes to end her suffering. When Migi wakes up, the boy credits his mother for saving him again, but despite her death, he struggles to grieve. Soon, Hirokawa is elected mayor, while Hirama and Chuji join Yamagishi in the military secret operation. At their residence, Tamiya shares her theory that reducing the human population would also decrease pollution and waste. Hirokawa agrees to this, then greets Gotu, who's dining on human flesh. Gotu states that after taking over his host's body, he received the command to devour mankind. Hearing this, Tamiya touches her belly protectively. While watching over Satomi, Shinichi decides that his purpose is to eradicate the parasites. Unbeknownst to him, a man is taking photos, compromising their identities. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.